Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to pay tribute to a dear old friend, clunky as it was, as unimpressive as it could be, even though created by an industry-leading tech giant. We are here to remember iTunes. My name is Carrie Green, and I am the Client Happiness Guy at PodcastFastTrack.com, and this is Podcastification. This show is all about podcasting, how to do it, how not to do it, best practices, interesting news items that have to do with the realm of podcasting, and who knows what else. And I'm trying to do it all with a little bit of fun and some information to help you get a show going, keep yours going, or make it better. And if you like what's going on here on the show, I would appreciate it, oh, so appreciate it, if you could leave a rating or review on iTunes. You can find out how to do that at podcastfasttrack.com slash review. That's enough of that kind of stuff. Let's get you podcastificated right away. Hey, welcome back to Podcastification. You know, back in June, right around the beginning of June of 2019, this big thing that Apple does every year called WWDC, it's Worldwide Developers Corporation, I don't know, a syndicate, I don't know, that's not a C, that's an S. Anyway, it's an Apple meeting where they announce all kinds of new things that are going to be coming from Apple. Well, this year, it was highly anticipated that they would be making some announcements about the iTunes app and about some changes as far as Apple Podcasts go. And the reason we thought this was coming is because a long, long time ago, Apple asked all of us podcasters to begin referring to the app on the iPhone as Apple Podcasts. So that was kind of a harbinger that something was coming. Well, sure enough, at this particular WWDC... They said that iTunes, the software iTunes, which up to this point has been in existence on Apple OS and on PCs, iTunes is going away. They are doing away with it. Now, just hold your horses and be a little calm here. It's not all going to happen at once. In fact, none of the changes that we're going to go through in this episode are actually in place until Apple users upgrade their software. And from what I can tell, that is available even now. Some podcast consultants have already gotten the software and are starting to check it out on their Apple devices. Now, I'm a PC guy, so I'm not going to be able to advise you about what you're going to see when you get there. But if you contact me, I can point you to resources that will. But here are the basics as I understand them. Instead of the iTunes software that now includes the iTunes store and all kinds of video content and all kinds of products and all kinds of podcasts, they are breaking it apart into different apps for those different areas. Primarily, what we're aware of is there's going to be Apple TV, there's going to be Apple Podcasts, and there's going to be Apple Music. So three different apps will all be separated out. So the podcasts will be natively within that Apple Podcasts app. All right. And so if you are using an Apple computer and you typically use iTunes to do all that kind of stuff, you're going to find new apps when your system upgrades to the newest edition. Now, what does that mean for the way your podcast is listed? What does that mean for the way that Apple searches? Well, we're going to get to the search stuff here in a bit, but let's just go one thing at a time. Your podcast will be ported over from iTunes into the new Apple podcast app as it stands. So you're not going to lose any content. You're not going to lose any subscribers. As far as we can tell, you're not going to lose any ratings and reviews. As far as we can tell, all that is going to remain pretty much the same. It's just being transferred over to a new app. So don't sweat it. There's no issues there. 
Now, one of the things we're pretty unsure about at this point is what's going to happen to PC users who have been using iTunes. Because I, for one, use iTunes for research. I go into iTunes and I search for different categories. I search different podcasts. I search keywords, all that kind of stuff. And I'm wondering what's going to happen there. Apple hasn't really said much about that. And I can kind of understand that. You know, they're focused on their primary users, which are Mac users, you know. So it makes sense to me. But I am curious about that. So let's keep our ears and eyes open for information about that. Now, there were a few other changes and announcements that came in this event. The next being that Apple is finally, after long, long, long last, (laughs) updating some of the categories in iTunes. If you've submitted a podcast recently, you know that the podcast categories that Apple allows you to choose from have been quite limited. There have been some overlaps, some things that wind up in categories that they don't have any business being in. All of that said, Apple is making some changes. Thank you, Apple. This is very helpful. Now, there are many new top-level categories and many new subcategories. There are far too many for me to go through on this episode, but I am going to give you a link in the show notes for this episode or the description on your podcast player or app. And you can go to podcastfasttrack.com slash Apple categories, and it'll take you right to Apple's very own page that shows you all of the categories that are available. So let me give you some caution and advice on this. This is June 10th of 2019 when this is being recorded. These categories have been made known to us by Apple, but they are not yet available to us. All right. They're just telling us what's coming. So don't start emailing your media host and asking them if you can upgrade to the new categories because the new categories don't even exist in your media host account yet. They don't even exist on Apple yet. They're just telling you this is where we're going. So just relax, cool your jets, let yourself know that it's coming and you've got time. You've got time to get this taken care of. Now, if you are hosting your podcast on Libsyn or Blueberry or Spreaker or Podbean or Simplecast or any of those places, your media host should be notifying you once they have those category selections available inside your account. And then you'll be able to go in and make those changes. Now, one of the advantages of being with Libsyn, which is the host where all of my shows are, is that Libsyn enables you to do this kind of thing per destination because not all of the destinations, meaning Stitcher and Google Podcasts and you know all the different directories, are going to change their categories to match Apple's. They won't all do it, so they'll have limited categories still perhaps. In Libsyn, you can go into all those destinations and select them independently. So that's one of the reasons I like working with Libsyn is because they have a lot of these little nuances in mind when they create their user interface. And by the way, if you would love to sign up for Libsyn, I have an affiliate code that you can use, which means I get a little kickback for referring you to Libsyn, but you pay the same price. And in fact, if you use this affiliate code, you could get up to a month and a half off. You could go to Libsyn, you can sign up, and you can use the code PFT for Podcast Fast Track, and you will get that discount. So please go do that if you want to sign up for Libsyn. Now back to the categories. All those category changes will be in effect, they say, by the end of the summer. Okay, that may be mid-September for all we know. But you can be assured most media hosts are going to have this available before Apple actually releases it. So just listen to what your media host says. If you're not on their emailing list, figure out how to get on their emailing list so that you get updates about when those categories go live. Now, there's one last thing that wasn't really spoken about in depth at WWDC. In fact, all we really know about it comes from an email that Apple sent out to podcasters and to media hosts alike. And I think this is a bigger deal than any of the other things that I've mentioned. And that is that Google kind of set the bar really high and Apple is now going to follow suit trying to keep up with Google. Now, what is it I'm talking about? Well, Google announced a few months ago that moving ahead, you will be able to search for keywords and some of the results that come up when you search in Google for those particular search phrases will be drawn from the audio of podcast episodes. Now, did you hear what I said? The audio of podcast episodes. So they're using speech-to-text technology 
to transfer audio content into text so that Google can then search it and return results based on what it searches. Well, Apple just announced the new Apple Podcasts platform will be following suit, will be doing the same thing. And I think this is a huge deal because this means moving forward, once they get all the wrinkles ironed out, which we don't know exactly when that'll be, but moving forward, people who go into the Apple Podcasts app and search for keywords will not only be receiving search volume based on the title of a podcast and or the author's name or the author field, which is the case now, it will also be drawing from the actual content of those episodes. It will also be drawing from the guests of those episodes. It may even have a place for us to include images of guests and things like that. Now, Apple has not said how all of this is going to take place and will we have to go into their Podcast Connect interface to upload this stuff for every episode. I can't imagine that's going to be the case. That would just be so cumbersome for everybody. So my guess is it's going to somehow be related to your media host account. That's my guess, educated guess. So again, if you're not on a mailing list for your particular media host account, you should do that. You should get on that list so that you receive announcements about these kinds of things when they become available. This is bringing up an interesting question, and that is, since Apple and Google are both saying that they're moving into this speech-to-text technology and going to return results based on that, do show notes really play that big of a role anymore? I mean, do you need to worry about SEO-optimized content for your particular episodes of your podcast? That's a great question. It's one I've been trying to think through because I have a company that provides SEO-optimized show notes as part of our packages. So as you might imagine, I'm pretty concerned about this. Now, I'm not one of those guys who's going to cast stones at every new thing that comes up just because it threatens my income stream. Now, I'm going to flex and I'm going to adapt. But at this point, what I think is the case is that it's just like fishing. You know, when you go fishing, the more hooks you throw into the water with the appropriate bait on them, the more likely you are to catch a fish. You have better chances when you have six hooks in the water rather than just one. Well, the SEO world is very much the same thing. Will you be returning results based on Google's AI-driven technologies that turn the speech into text and return results as a, as a result? Well, absolutely, you will. But will you be getting search result volume coming from SEO-optimized show notes that you create for that episode? Well, absolutely, you will. You're putting another hook in the water. So that's how I see it. That's how I think it, it naturally is going to work. Now, I could be proven wrong on that, but I don't think so because that's just how the internet works overall. That's why content marketing is a thing is because the more content you put out there, the more opportunities you have to get the eyes of your target audience onto your show. And you see, that's how content marketing works. So that's all I got for this episode about the death of iTunes. Now, let me put a little caveat in there. This is all going to happen really slowly. And for PC users, who knows? iTunes, as we know it, the clunky version we've had for years, may exist for a long time. We just don't know. I can't imagine Apple just totally dropping that platform with no replacement for PC users. But we'll see. That's just my hunch. Hello? I would love to hear what you think about this whole death of iTunes thing, you can do so by reaching out to me, Kerry, C-A-R-E-Y at podcastfasttrack.com. Or you can use the hashtag podcastification to get my attention on social media. And we will chat about it there. That's all I got for today. You know what time it is. It's time for you to go out and make it a podcastificating day. <laughs> This show is brought to you by Podcast Fast Track, where my team provides professional podcasting services without the time suck. Full production, editing, and show notes, all in one monthly subscription package. You can find out more at podcastfasttrack.com. Now go out and make it a podcastificating day.
Audio editing and show notes by podcastfasttrack.com. Get 15% off your first month by mentioning this show.